Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our unboxing and first impressions look at the Infinix Note 4 Pro. Infinix is a company you've probably not heard of here in the United States, but they have an increasing presence across Africa and Asia, especially with India. The company is based in Hong Kong, and they've produced several very interesting smartphones in the past two years. Actually, all of their phones have unique selling points that you'll seldom find compared to other Shenzhen-based companies. And the Note 4 Pro is unique because it supports an active stylus digitizer in the same sense as the Samsung Galaxy Note series that it was clearly inspired by. It's actually a big deal because if you think about it, aside from the Galaxy Note, there are very few other smartphones that have a built-in stylus. The LG G Stylo series has a stylus, but it's a passive one. It doesn't have pressure sensitivity, so it's not really great if you are a digital artist, and it's okay for sketches, but it's not nearly as high-tech as the Wacom-based pen built into Samsung's device. But what's interesting here is although it supports that pressure-sensitive stylus, it's actually not bundled with the phone. Uh, the phone itself can be found for under $160. You can find it in the links down below, which makes it very affordable as an unlocked device. It has a unibody finish, and you can pick up the stylus optionally for about $15, bundled with a case that also has a touch-sensitive panel on the front. Uh, other phones that the company has released include a 18 by 9 aspect ratio phone. There's also one with an optical zoom camera. So all of their offerings are unique. So very promising here. Uh, packaging here is fairly simple. Now the phone comes in a few different configuration models. The base one comes with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of built-in storage. Uh, it also has a gigantic 4,500 milliamp hour capacity battery with their proprietary X-Charge technology that promises to give you 250 hours of talk time and just five minutes of charging and you can charge a phone for 30 minutes and use it for the entire day furthermore it has a 5.7 inch ips lcd panel again it has uh, an octa-core chipset it is powered by a media tech along with a fingerprint scanner and a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera sliding the box open we have the phone right on top it seems we'll take a closer look at the note 4 in a second uh, so again 5.7 inches it's it is a pretty large phone because this one does not have that newer two by one aspect ratio it's definitely not a compact phone uh, but again that large battery pack uh, as well as that support for a unique digital stylus does make it a pretty nice budget alternative to something like the Samsung Galaxy Note series. There's actually nothing behind this cardboard sheet. Uh, all the accessories are located on the back. So you have to peel off this extra sticker and then you can reveal the chargers and accessories like this. So it opens up in the back. Very interesting packaging pre and presentation. There's the SIM card ejector tool along with a user manual from Infinix, including the warranty documentation. And there's also a extra screen protector, which is a nice little bonus. In here we have what looks like maybe even earbuds. So that is a nice premium accessory thrown in there for free and also has an inline remote for microphones and answering phone calls. There's also the charging cable, which is using micro USB, but it looks a little bit different. You can see in terms of the accent and the, how it's designed with the slit in the center, it's a little bit reminiscent of how Oppo designed uh, their rapid chargers with the Find 7, if you guys still remember that phone from a few years ago. A quick look at the phone here, we're gonna peel off this protective film on the front, which is just showing you some of the features, including that sharp uh, 5.7 inch display, and we have slightly 2.5D curved glass on the sides that's uh, crafted by Corning and uh, gives you a nice little protection. There's also capacitive keys below for going back and opening the multitasking drawer, and there's a fingerprint scanner on the front. 8 megapixel camera for selfies. It's running on their XOS, which is going to be a very interesting skin on top of Android. Since I've never reviewed any Infinix devices in the past, I'm eager to see how their skin compares with uh, versions by Xiaomi and Huawei, things like that. There's a earpiece. The side here also features the volume rocker and everything is made out of aluminum so it feels very nicely put together. There's also the SIM card ejector tool. Uh, the back here, another protective film. And we have the 13 megapixel camera, dual tone LED flash, Infinix logo, and the note symbol on the bottom here. This is a very premium feeling phone just like on many flagships such as the OnePlus 5T or the Le Pro and Le Eco devices that we've seen. There are no plastic components on the top or bottom. The antenna band has been expertly integrated into the metal. So again, it feels incredibly hefty and well-made in the hand. 
And what's really interesting is that there's a separate micro SD card slot on the other side. So there's two uh, trays for holding SIM cards and micro SD cards separately. So you can use both instead of one or the other, like on many hybrid SIM card tray designs. And finally, this very interesting looking three pogo contact pins uh, is what will dock and hold the stylus if you pick that up uh, with the phone. And the stylus uh, does have a very small battery that you can charge up using these contact pins. Uh, very interesting. I do wish that the stylus was included considering it really is the main selling point, at least for me, of this particular phone. All right, so the boot up sequence is actually pretty stock looking. It says get started. We're going to skip inserting a SIM card. As we add a name to the phone, you can see the keyboard here has also been heavily customized. It's definitely not stock Android. And we'll put it on here, lift it, slightly move it around to get a uh, better reading. Now the button here, the fingerprint scanner, actually physically presses down like a hardware key, very similar to the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. Uh, so you can use it to go back home. Um, you can also use it to set up several different gestures in the settings for commanding and accessing quick shortcuts. And we are greeted to the user interface. It says XOS launcher, stylish, safe, efficient. Obviously, if you don't like the way this launcher works, you can always uh, install your own launcher package, like the Google Now one, uh, for a more stock experience. But for now, we'll just see how this works out. It's uh, setting up our desktop for the first time, and we'll do a quick comparison here with some other devices very similar. This is the Xiaomi Mi Note 2, which, funny enough, also has a 5.7-inch display. So it has the exact same screen size, and the overall dimensions are very similar. The Mi Note 2 is a more premium phone, also heavily influenced by the Galaxy Note series. Uh, but this one has curved edges, it has a slightly faster processor, there's no stylus support on the Mi Note. Uh, but this is a phone that's about $300 to $400 versus only $150. So you are talking about a pretty big difference there. And here's a phone with the, a slightly wider aspect ratio. This is the Redmi 5 Plus or the Redmi uh, Note 5. And you can tell it's about the same, but it has a taller display. First impressions, the screen actually seems to be pretty decent. Uh, touch responsive also seems to be good. We have that uh, drag down notification shade with rounded icons that reminds me a little bit of how Asus designs their drag down shades. There's an ultra power saving mode right there. There's GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, support for 4G LTE. And we also have uh, that X note icon right there. So once you click on the stylus, it will quickly launch air commands and you can hover on the display to look at uh, shortcuts as well as all the features very similar to what Samsung does with their um, S Pen. So very interesting there. And uh, there's also that fingerprint scanner. Google apps are all pre-installed, it seems like. We do in fact have a consolidated app drawer on XOS, which is very different from MIUI and the majority of other Chinese smartphones. So I can categorize these alphabetically, I can scroll through, search by a specific name, I can also just directly pull up from the bottom of the screen just like on the Pixel launchers, uh, which is very cool. Definitely very interesting that they installed all of these programs for you. And then this one just on the middle here just launches the camera immediately. And turn it on again, we are greeted to a changing kind of wallpaper here, very similar to Xiaomi's MIUI. If we go into settings right now and just go into about phone, you can see it's running on Android version 7.0 Nougat right out of the box, and it does have XOS version 2.3. That's our unboxing and first impressions look at the Infinix Note 4 Pro. Uh, we'll definitely be doing a lot more testing with this phone, see how it compares with something like the Galaxy Note series, and we'll also be trying out the stylus very soon. We'll also be seeing if it works with Samsung's S Pen or other Wacom styluses on the market, other than the proprietary one that they sell uh, that can be docked on the side there. But in terms of value, it seems like a very interesting proposition. If you're looking for a uh, Note-like device, but you want to save a few bucks, the construction here is also really top-notch, as good as any flagship, because it's completely made out of metal, very well-crafted, and again, it's by a very interesting company that seems to be producing unique and fairly original smartphones compared to the rest of uh, Shenzhen manufacturers we've seen. So be sure to stay tuned for that. This has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.